Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the final um, public sector group session for um, 2023. Um, it's brilliant to see so many people signed on to the event and so many people um, will be attending. So in a moment, I am going to um, hand over to Scott to take us through the next hour. Just um, a, a small amount of housekeeping. Please feel free to use the chat to um, to have discussions um, but as always I would ask you to keep the chat healthy and constructive um, and um, we will put, if you can put questions in the questions tab it's easier for us to um, to find them but if you need to put them in the chat I know if you're signed on from a mobile device you can't get onto the questions tab then um, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat and uh, uh, Scott and I will uh, follow those through um, during the course of the uh, of the session. So um, it now just uh, falls to me to um, hand over to Scott to take us through the next hour. So over to you, Scott. Thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, thank you for inviting me back to talk on the power of three. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and welcome to this session that we've done three times now, talking about the power of three, ROPA, retention and uh, over retention and information asset registers had a moment there uh what i want to do this time however is rather than go through what we've covered before so if you've not been to any of the sessions that we've done on the power of three before you can find them on the rms youtube channel and i highly recommend uh i know that's biased because i did them but I do, they are, they are quite good. And there was some very good conversation about it. Uh, this time I'm going to do a little bit of Mystic Meg, a little bit of, well, if we're facing some interesting times ahead, and if we're facing a little bit of lethargy in the sector, some interesting challenges, some changes with GDPR and various other things that are going on to put obstacles in our way, then what can we do to try and change some of that? So, oh, hang on, my clicker's broke. Modern technology, there we go. Right, reconnected, lovely. So, quick introduction for those that, that, that are not aware who I am. My name is Scott Sammons. I am a freelance information governance specialist and remote DPO for a number of organisations. I started my career about 15 years ago in local government and have been moving around ever since. I've been freelance for the last five years at my own baby, Lighthouse IG, and I also volunteer for the IRMS, and I'm also a skills coach for the Data Protection and Information Governance Apprenticeship Program, sales plug, which if you've not had a look at, I highly, highly recommend. We've got three providers that do it now, so you've got a wealth of people to choose from in your apprenticeship program. Unfortunately, it's not extended to Scotland and Northern Ireland yet. I'm hoping it might be in the future. Fingers crossed. I digress. So, some things before we get started. First off, uh, as you all heard in the King's speech, and as you, you might have seen over the last couple of weeks, the Data Protection and Digital Information Bill has had some tweaks and has a little bit of a revitalization and the government's plan is to get it in before the election next autumn. Where it will exactly go, if the government will last the next autumn, all of these fundamental questions, we don't know. It's a little bit of, it could go that way, it could go that way, so I'm not gonna take anything as gospel. As the good man once said, and for those of you that are a Jerry Anderson fan, you'll recognize this, anything can happen in the next half an hour. So, who knows? I would, however, like to throw around some ideas, have a little bit of geeky fun with it, play around with it. Most of this is very much my personal opinion. Uh, I'm literally sweaty palm because some of the things I'm going to suggest to you today are a little bit, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, controversial. So, for a Thursday afternoon, we're going to be a little bit out there. So, um, Fair warning. Another bit of fair warning is you are going to be getting involved. So I am going to be asking you questions 
and I want your input. If not, this is going to be the quickest hour you're ever going to have in your life. So this is a little bit of a warning, a little bit of a plea. Please do give me some suggestions when we're talking about it and some of your input and thoughts. I want to know what you think. So a trigger warning. <laughs> uh, first things first, I may well tell bad jokes. Uh, you have been warned. Uh, I'm going to suggest some ideas that might be popular, that might not. It's going to be a mixed bag. Um, Ollie says, uh, yes, it will be recorded and it will be posted to YouTube. So if you do have issues, if you've got some technical problems, yes, it will be uploaded, not a problem. Uh, I'm going to be motivational. I'm going to play devil's advocate. So I'm going to be a little bit of, we need to be happy, happy. I'm going to do a little bit of, a little bit cynical. I'm going to do a little bit of both. Uh, I went to the gym this morning and did my second body pump class in two weeks. So I hurt. So I'm a little bit of, yay, and a little bit of, ow. Uh, so if every now and again I look like I'm in pain, that's why. But I very much want your opinion. I want your experience on things. I want to know what you think. Because it's definitely something that we think can work with people and work for people and work for organisations. But it's very much going to be dependent on you. Thank you, Kelly. Oh, no, it's that one I pressed, not that one. So what I want to explore, I want to talk about IARs and ROPA. I want to talk about where ROPA is going. So even if the government does choose to water it down and make it more about high risk processing, so it only really then technically applies to, well, basically the public sector with some exceptions for the private uh, sector. W what does that mean? What can we try and do to still make real good use of it? Because for those of you that have heard me talk on this topic before, I am a staunch advocate for saying this is something that is incredibly useful to your GDPR compliance program, and it's worth the effort, putting effort into it. It's not one of those things where you put the effort in, you just get a thing over there, and you then ask yourself, was it really worth it? If we put the effort in and get it right, it can be incredibly useful, incredibly useful, and make all of our lives a little easier. But we've got to get it right. So we've got a few problems. So first things first, and uh, you probably I've mentioned this before. This is one of my favorite sayings. Uh, John F. Kennedy talked about this when they were talking about the space program and the space race at the time. He did a big uh, speech on it, uh, YouTube. It's a very good speech. Uh, and what he says, I can't do a John F. Kennedy impression, so I'm not even going to bother. Uh, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one we are willing to accept, one we are willing to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and the others too. Now, Roper won't get you to the moon. Well, it might do. If you're a space agency, you're doing ROPA, yes, it will contribute to that. So actually, that's not quite true. It will get some people to the moon. But the principle is the same. It's hard work. I'm not going to lie about that. I think it's fair to say, and you can disagree with me if you want to in the chat, but I think it's fair to say, uh, and give me a thumbs up if you agree with this, that doing information asset management getting people to fill in their IARs, getting people to update their ROPAs, maintaining a ROPA, a retention schedule, an information asset register is hard work. Would you say that's, yeah, that thumbs up across the board. It is hard work. It is a challenge. It can be very rewarding. It can put you on the map. It can also be a, oh my God, I just want to bang my head against a brick wall. It's a bit of both. So my, what's the word I'm looking for? The thing I want to talk about today, and I talked about this at the East of England IG forum about a year or so ago, where they asked me to talk about GDPR and records management. Uh, and I kind of went to them and said, well, you're all very senior professionals. What am I going to, to tell you that you don't already know? So actually, I'd actually like to talk to you about what is your view of records management? You, 
as a person, as an individual, as a professional, what are your views on it? Why do you do it? Why do you do this job? Why, if we're the ones that are going to push forward with implementing a combined roper or even separate, whichever way you want to go, why? What's your driver? What's the thing that gets you there? What is that motivator? And this would be my question back to you now is what excites you about information and records management? What gets you going? What, I'm going to use a sexually explicit phrase now, what turns you on? Does it turn you on? Does it excite you? What? What is it? So one suggestion is I love people, I love helping people get it and equally get it right. So that sort of, you see it, it lights up your eyes. I like that. Creating order out of chaos. Oh, I like that. That's two people for creating order out of chaos. I like that. Uh, trusting information we find, giving training and support. Order. There's lots of order here. <laughs> We've got some um, Emperor Palpatines in the room. I must have order. Or was it? No, it was John Burko, wasn't it, in the Parliament? Order. Uh, making life easier, saves time, saving people time organizing people oh one suggestion is i like it because people actually listen to me i like that helping colleagues to work more getting things more organized clearing out the rot uh someone's got to do it someone's got to do it does that get you up in the morning does that does that motivate you in the morning it might do but i'm not entirely convinced it does but you know, if you want to make the case oh, i'll quite happily listen uh, protecting people, more create, more more creating. Hang on a minute, that's the other way around, isn't it? Creating chaos out of order. Don't you mean creating order out of chaos, or do you mean creating chaos out of order? Because I'm I'm probably like you. I like to cause a bit of chaos. Uh, oh, finding the gems amongst the trivial, uh, making improvements, finding solutions. Uh, Order out of chaos, organizing the mess, saving time by improving processes. I love it if something that used to take ages or be impossible can quickly be achieved because we actually did what we said what we would do. Oh, I like that. Getting rid of information we longer need. Nothing. It was that or redundancy. <laughs> yeah, a few of us have fallen into that, 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 that bucket. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, don't like because nothing ever changes. It takes a long time to create change. It does indeed take a very long time to take change. But when that change comes, ooh, it's all the more worth it because you can then see that all that was worth it. Uh, Jane says, ultimately, so uh, will be kept permanently for the nation after all the work for future generations to use for research. Ooh, creating a legacy. Ooh, I like that. That's definitely worth getting up for in the morning. I've created a bit of a legacy. This, I have effectively changed the organization. Oh, I like that. Uh, seeing things get better, you definitely have to view it as a marathon. Yep, not a sprint, it's a marathon. I agree with that. Uh, identifying where people have gone wrong, especially if they did it deliberately. Yeah. I, part of the reason why I love this job is that I'm very nosy. I like to see what people are up to. And I'm that person that goes, oh, you'll never guess what they've been doing. That's me. Uh, so I can totally relate to that one. Yep. Uh, to quote Hannibal Smith from the A-Team, I love it when a plan comes together. Uh, working across the organisation, especially with people who get it. Also the legacy stuff. But on the flip side, having a good clear out. Yes. Nothing better than create or storing something and retaining something that's then useful a little bit later on and seeing how that helps the organization but in the same breath i love a good old-fashioned book burning oh. uh <laughs> helping rishi find the whatsapps <laughs> might have helped the scottish government with that one. Oh, political uh, helping operational staff save time money and frustration not sure excite is included definitely a marathon yeah the payoff in the business teams when things are properly organized, protecting the history of the organization. Yes. Uh, when we did um, 
we did a little bit of work on the history of the IRMS. So we reached out to a few people. Paul kindly helped, and a few other um, people that have been in the society uh, uh, in previous execs and etc. Um, that was a fun piece of work, because we found all sorts of stuff around the history of information records management, the history of the society, and the fact that Emma Martins, the um, regulator for Guernsey, then talked about it and included it in her talk at conference last year, this year. Uh, that was really exciting. That was a proper little geeky moment. Like, oh, we did that. Ha -ha. Sad, don't get out much, but you know, it's the little things in life. Yep. Uh, Printing history, help people, import me, uh, help people make important decisions. Uh, I like boxes. Your inner cack is coming out there, like a good box. Mm. Uh, I heard a record manager on a podcast say she's a passion for disposition. Oh, my initial, my initial response was to for passion, really. Then I reflected and concluded that I was the same. I like to get to the end of the story and see things through. Well, I'd agree with that, actually. Oh, a passion for disposition. Oh, I think that needs to be on a T-shirt, you know. Oh, um, oh, actually, there's a project that we're working on at the moment, a little bit of a, a series of events we're putting together next year. That's a nice little strap line, that. Oh, oh. Oh, mm. uh, finding something I would never expect we have in our records. Oh, exciting or funny. Yes, there are some things that you find that you then go, this is either really good stuff or you look at it and go, what the hell was going, <laughs> going on here? Yeah, like that. Working across all areas of the organisation. Yeah, there's some really good ones there. Or oh, cringe at why it was kept. Yeah, why have you hung on to that? Why did you hang on to that? Really? Really? There's some really good ones here. Some really good ones here. Uh, oh, support transparency and accountability. Only possible with good record keeping. I hate secrecy for secrecy's sake. Yes, I would agree with that very much so. It has its place, but when it's used widely, it's like, why? What are you hiding? For what reason? Yep. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to ask, thank you for that. I really appreciate that. That's really good. And that I, I hope that's got you as fired up about it as it has me. So it's some really good examples in there uh, for why we do what we do. And what I would say to you is, um, <laughs> finding the record store that's also doubled up as the explosive store. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you see an idea from 20 years ago, like, let's go paper free, only took another 25 years to happen. Yeah, we get there in the end. That's a marathon. Yeah. Um, the next time that you are feeling like there are some challenges, that you remember some of these things. Because what we tend to do is we tend to focus on the business case for records management. Uh, so, for example, we will say, yes, it improves services. Yes, it protects patient data or it protects citizens' data. Yes, it does. that's been proven time and time again. It does save money. That's logical. Rather than keeping all this, we're only keeping this. So of course, it's going to save money. They're all logical arguments that most people would expect you to say when you're writing a project. It's going to improve services. It's going to help protect data. It's going to save money. These aren't new things. They don't get the board excited. But what does? We've talked about what gets us excited, and we're going to come back to that because I want to build on that. But in terms of getting buy-in for resources, for getting others excited about it, We've kind of got to take some of that excitement that we get from it and put it into what we're doing, what we're saying, what we're writing or what we're asking for. So we all know that email management means you get less rubbish knocking around. You can tell a thousand stories and when you talk to the members of staff about it, they'll all give you the same story. They can't see the wood for the trees. They're sick and tired of being copied into emails, endless email strings. Everyone's just sick of email. But then when you ask them, well, what do you want to do about it? You get a bit of a Mleh. a little bit of Mleh. and then this, the, the solution then becomes a little bit deflated. Whereas actually, what we can do 
is reinflate it and go, actually, this is what we can do with this. This is what we can do with this. Bring some of that passion and excitement that you've all just outlined there into, do you know what, we could have less rubbish. We could have better quality of uh, data quality. We could have better cybersecurity controls. We could have less rubbish. We could have, uh, we could know why we're doing stuff. Although some people would say they probably don't want to know why they're doing stuff, but that's a separate issue. We could say, look, all this problem we're having with SARS would go away. We are, all this problem we're having with data sharing would go away. We had someone come on a, a course around the other day who did a piece of work to find out various things that they've got, and they may or may not be involved in platform announcements. Um, they were talking about how actually they get loads of requests for people asking for uh, platform announcements, training enthusiasts, that sort of stuff. Uh, while it's not hundreds of thousands, it's still enough to cause a disruption to the organization. And they were even thinking about going down the vexatiousness route. It's like, no, why? If you can buy uh, computer sounds from Star Trek, for example, why don't you just sell them? Make some money out of it. Clearly, there's a market for it. Clearly, you've got an infinite library of them, of various different announcements and various different stations. Why don't you make some money out of it? A little commercial enterprise shouldn't be difficult to do. That way, then the training enthusiasts are happy. You've then got something out in the public domain, and you're making a little money out of it. The world's a better place. Ha, 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 ha. How could we do that? By knowing what we've got. By actually making a see, you've already got one. We've already got one in the audience, and that's just an audience of 132. Let alone how many citizens are there in the world in the UK? Something 20 million. I'm going to guess about that. Uh, sell one a pop at a pound or two pound or whatever you do. I don't know. Uh, could easily bring enough money to pay for a, a records management system, maybe. Ha 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 ha. So we've got the obvious places where it makes and improves and maintaining a roper and IAR and whatever else does help. But as we mentioned before, and this is the this is the this is the negative bit which we're gonna be we're gonna we're, uh, have to visit and talk about is would you would it be fair to say that in your organizations there's a bit of an apathy problem? Oh, there's 67 million of us. All right, okay. All, all right, okay. Okay. Um, thank you. That's good to know. I'll write that one down. That's worthy of knowing. Um, would you say in your organizations, where it concerns information records management, there's a bit of an apathy problem, or a priority problem, or an image problem, or, as someone has just pointed out, all of the above? Are you one? Are you two? Are you all? Priority, all. Apathy, priority, all. Oh, I'm going to hang on to that uh, link. Someone's put in a link about train announcements. I'm going to have a read of that. They think that they would stop them doing things or tell them that they're doing it wrong. Yeah, so there's definitely an image problem. They think we're um, out to get them. Definitely a priority problem, possibly fuels by the other two. Yep. These are all linked. All of them linked. Because if you've got a bit of an ap apathy problem, that's probably because there's some sort of image problem driving that, which then means it gets deprioritized off the back of that. Unnecessarily added to the basket of problems. Yes. Business priorities versus RM priorities. Money problem. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's kind of a sub part of priority because money problems tend to drive your priority problems. But yeah, I would agree money problem is a thing. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Lack of time, lack of resources. Think it's someone else's problem. Yeah. So we've got an image problem. We've got an understanding problem. We've got a priority problem. Uh, we've got an apathy problem in its wider sense. We've got a little bit of a... Uh, as someone mentioned there, a little bit of a we're we're here, not we're not here to help. We're here to hinder. 
we get in the way. We're a cost. We're a complication. We're an annoyance. We are, as that last one says, if you can see that, because it is a bit small, uh, we're the filing elf or that data elf or the uh, record management elf. It just happens. They expect us to just do it and get on with it. And <laughs> uh, records management, no need. I made a backup of my entire unsorted email. Left it for the next person. Uh, yes, I thought you'd like that one. <laughs> Elf is polite. Yes, it is a very polite way of saying general dog's body. The data dog's body or the records management dog's body would just do it. And we'll all just move on with our lives. Whereas actually, as we all know, that isn't quite true. That doesn't quite happen in that way. And that actually isn't the data fairy that does it. It's people. So we've got an apathy problem. We've got a, did I just go back one? We've got an apathy problem. We've got a priority problem. We've got an image problem. So how do we try and deal with these, some of these problems? And the key thing that is common in almost all of them so I've seen organizations, I've worked with a number of organizations now, both myself with ActNow, various organizations that I work with. Uh, the ones that get it right, they don't have a magic formula. So they don't have a magic pot of cash. They don't have a magic wishing tree or any of that stuff. They have people. Um, oh, I like that. Sometimes the role can feel a bit bin crew without the high vis or the union influence. Yeah, you just don't know. Hmm. 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 Uh, good question, Paul. We are going to come back to that. So some people have people. Some people have tools. It's a real mixed bag of things out there. But what they do have is attitude and i mean good attitude not just you know attitude if we're going to try and change perceptions if we're going to try and change limitations if we're going to try and change win hearts and minds then it is literally how do we win hearts and minds how do we win friends win friends and influence people if you've not read the book i highly recommend it because it is the people, or sorry, the organizations that have got this right, well, have got it close to being right. I'm yet to find an organization where it is perfect. There are a couple of organizations that have gotten very close on limited budgets. So we're not talking billion dollar industries here. We're talking public sector, charities, um, small business, small, medium sized businesses, and big businesses as well. On the whole, us that face challenges in a number of areas, there's some really exa examples of good practice. And almost all of them, when I reached out to them and said, you know, what do you do? How do you do it? What's this? What's this? What's this? The common factor amongst all of them was attitude. Was a, the staff that they've got, even if they've only got one, the staff that they've got, they are the difference that makes the difference. Their motivation, their approach, their people skills, their drive and passion is enough to make the case for something, to push something forward, to bring people along on the journey. So even if it is a, we're doing this on a shoestring budget and we're having to make do with what we've got, and the question there we are, using the joy of Excel, which has its benefits, it has its drawbacks, but mm, uh, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter, but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things because they've got people with the right attitude. So for those of you that are Trekkies, there's a quote from Star Trek, the uh, episode with Khan Union Singh, that says, if you improve a mechanical device, you may double productivity, but you improve a man and you gain a thousandfold. So software 
will play a pass it is so uh, there's a very good point that's been made there around burnout as a profession especially when it's a marathon and this is where people plural come in so uh, one of the things we're also going to look at is yes we should be a driving force we should share some of that passion that we have for our profession for our what we do and drive some of that into the business into the organization yes but what we should also do is this so you know when we did that conversation just now about why you get excited by it be honest with me and you can say no if it didn't but if it did when you saw what people we what people wrote there and some of the examples they they gave around why they get excited about this did you feel just a little bit just a tiny tiny little bit more energized be honest did you ah conversations yes Quite a few of you did. The amount of um, thumbs up and, and hearts and all sorts of things uh, that are coming through there, definitely. And we need more of that, more of it. I've been to some brilliant events and learned a lot. And you do get from like these sorts of things, networking events and others, you do get that motivational, just by hearing other people's stories, you do get that. But I think we should also do more of the motivational stuff to have those sorts of conversations as to what gets you fired up about it? What gets you fired up? And do a little bit of a loving. Because to the point raised there, sometimes this can be a very lonely, hard marathon that we're running. But if you've ever run a marathon, and I haven't, so I'm going on what Alison North tells me, is that you, if there are people shouting at you, not shouting at you, shouting for you from the sidelines, you've got family around you, whatever, you've got people around you, they don't have to ne necessarily be co-workers, but just colleagues that are edging you on, that are giving you just that little bit of energy when you need it, that is worth its weight in gold. So this is a two-pronged approach, well, three-pronged. Technology, yes, plays its part, that is true. But so does your energy levels, and so does support for your energy levels. So I would encourage you, as part of your Donna, as part of your approach to this, to yes, look at how technology can help you. Yeah, definitely. Look at your energy levels, your motivation, your outward persona. Are you bringing people with you on this journey, or are you not? But also how you can win their hearts and minds. What skills can you give them so that this becomes an upskilling exercise? This becomes a, we're genuinely here to help. I'm genuinely here to give you the skills that you need to do your job. I was going to wear a Christmas hat because I thought, oh, actually, this is the last one of the, uh, the season, but I forgot. So it's still in my Christmas box, which is in the locker. So. I didn't actually get it. So here's Father Christmas instead. So you're not going to get a Christmas present of here, here's an IAR roper and a nice three combined together in a lovely, jubbly, funky little product. And here's all the training and here's all the staff attitudes and here's all the things that goes with it. That's not going to happen. What you are going to get, what Santa can do for you, I know it's early, but this is the last one of the season. So I thought, well, why not? I work in, re I used to, but my first job was in retail, so I think the C word shouldn't be mentioned until December. But it's last one of the year, so I thought I'd, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd throw it into the mix. Because doing it in January is just a bit weird. So cut me some slack. Not a lot of slack, mind you, but just a little bit. So the solution, therefore, is you. The only person that's going to make this better, the only person that's going to help you. That sounds really motivational, but it is true. The only person that's going to really fundamentally change the world in which you live in, in which you work in, the main person that's going to drive that is you. And I would say, having looked at a number of organizations now, spoken to them, some of them I've worked with, some of them I haven't. I've just reached out to them and said, I heard you were good. 
um, and had discrete conversations with on courses and other such things. The common denominator amongst all of them, every single one, was attitude. Every single one. So yes, technology plays a part and you can get lots of people to talk about different solutions. Some of them have been mentioned in there. Uh, everyone will talk about different approaches. And we've talked about the power of three and how it can help you and how it can try and streamline things. Yes. But the driving force behind all of it is you. So my advice to you, or my, no, actually, I'm not going to pitch this as advice. I'm going to pitch it as, as my ask of you is what can you do? Oh, character figure, finger. What can you do or what are you doing right now that you can treasure and build on? What can you do to become the difference that makes a difference? So if you're getting stuck, you've got the same old issues, the same old problems, you've got challenges that aren't shifting, all that good stuff. You've tried something a thousand times and it isn't working. What can you try that is different, that might just do the job, that might just mean we can align our ropers, our IRs and retention schedules, that might mean I just win that team over and win that person over and I've now got an ally rather than an enemy. What is it you can do so that if you feel that you are facing burnout, you feel alone or isolated in your role, what can you do to reach out? Uh, I was talking to Elizabeth before we all got started, and we were talking about how these sorts of events, how some of the social events that the society has put on has really helped people to reach out, but that still required them to register. It required them to come along. We put them on and we can help them facilitate. I'm going to use another cat, uh, kitten poster phrase now, sorry. Uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So what can you do to be the difference that makes the difference? That if you've tried something once before, that's something else. What can you do to try and move this along and improve things for yourself as well as for others? Now, <laughs> horse to water comment I made daily. Indeed, indeed. Uh, <clears throat> there are some days when you just want to drown the horse because you just think this is a, that's a separate issue. Um, so, future wise, so that's my ask of you. It's not a, uh, it's not a, um, a demand or it's not a, a challenge. It's not a, this is my advice or any of that, that stuff. It's a, I'm going to pose the question to you. Whether you choose to answer it, no. If whether you choose to take something from it, whether you choose to mull on it and then answer it in the future, or whether you want to go back to your office and think about it now, choice is yours. Just take that question, let your mind play around with it, and see where you end up. What could you do to make a difference, to drive and take some of that energy and passion that you've got, and to the point there, Trying to avoid people's names so it doesn't get picked up in the recording. So if I'm not mentioning you by name, I do apologize. Um, what can you do to communicate that passion? Share that passion. Passion is infectious. They say a smile is infectious. Passion is infectious. If you get motivated and energized, you will get some people that don't quite respond at first because it is a little bit like a like lighting a lighter. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. But Passion is infectious. Energy wants to go somewhere. So where can we get that energy from? What can we do and use that? I like that. Capitalize on allies. Find your friends. Celebrate your successes. Because we do loads of things really, really well and really, really good. But in our profession, we do, we do tend to focus on the negative. So what can we do to celebrate the successes? I did this today, I achieved this today, I communicated this with this person today and they got it. Uh, I've changed a heart and mind today. We deployed something today. Something worked today. Something we've spent money on, it actually worked. Aha, let's celebrate that. Uh, I completely agree with that comment. Communicate, collaborate and cake. 
You can bribe anyone with cake. It's worth its weight in gold. Uh, not necessarily chocolate, because some people take and leave chocolate, but almost everyone eats cake of some degree. Might not be an obvious cake, but someone, everyone eats cake in their own way. So it's definitely worth doing. Uh, a couple of comments before we move on. Uh, we've been looking at legacy systems. We talk about electronic deletion. Everyone holds their head. <laughs> we go away. Nothing passes out. This time we are talking, taking mantra, which is the best way to eat an elephant, a spoonful at a time. So we're looking at it on a very granular basis, and it seems to be moving. Yes. If you can't do big, do small. We do. We teach kids that with GCSE revision. Don't look at this whole thing you've got to learn. Break it into bite-sized chunks. And funny enough, that's exactly what I'm talking about in a moment. Uh, don't boil the ocean, boil a cup of tea. I talk in a really upbeat, happy voice and smile. I do. Uh, for all sorts of reasons. Customer service training. Um, you're always taught if you want to take the wind out of someone's sails or shut down a, a complainant, be nice to them. I think it's the Joker in the Batman trilogy that says smile at people. It confuses them. Do it. It's a very powerful weapon. Even when you don't feel like sm smiling internally, do it. If you'd be surprised how effective it is. Even me as a pessimist, I'm a naturally a pessimist. I, I am. Um, a little bit of the AD, AD, ADHD and a little bit of some other bits. I'm just a naturally a pessimist. Uh, but you'd be surprised the power of a smile totally throws the person you're talking to off. And it can actually put you in a good mood. Very weird. But do doing it. A little bit of rebranding. Yes, I agree with that. So for the future, conscious of time, for the future, we know that some changes are coming. We know that GDPR put information asset management on the agenda. It did. A lot of organizations got much further along with implementing records management, information asset management, because of GDPR. We know that to be true. Not, not all of them. But a fair chunk. So if the DP and DI bill is looking to take some of the wind out of the sails of GDPR, to water it down a little bit, to make it less of a stick than it was before, then we are the natural, logical, functional, and other type of all uh, defense to keep ROPA, to keep the benefits of doing the power of three, whether you do them separately or together, doesn't matter, I'm not pitching one way or the other today, uh, we are the ones to keep that alive. We are the ones to keep that going, because I'm fairly convinced, unless the government collapses in the next couple of weeks, which might happen, when I wrote this, that wasn't a possibility, but it might be now. Um, Roper will lose some of its oomph. That's probably going to happen. Uh, regardless of all the campaigning against it, regardless of all the evidence that the consultation said that uh, this was no point in fiddling with it, it's going to happen. For the majority of us in the public sector, it's still going to have some oomph. So we've still got something to play with, but it is, on the whole, going to lose its oomph. But everything we've talked about today, the case for why it helps, why it's really, really useful, why, 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 why aligning the three has values. So whether you align them or merge them, doesn't matter, it still gets good value. Why it's so useful for a number of reasons, all those things still remain. All those cases that we've made around how it protects confidentiality, how it helps us with in data integrity and availability, all these sorts of things, all of them still are still there. The law doesn't change that. They're all functionally and logically still there. Uh, comment, <coughs> comment, my defense of keeping robot, irrespective of processing risk, how do you assess a process to determine its risk level without, for instance, a record say what the lawful basis is that it uses? Yeah. That's an element of, yeah. Who's going to define high-risk processing? Because if you're keeping data and records digitally and not thinking about digital continuity and preservation, it's all high-risk. I fundamentally agree with that. Uh, so I think they're just tinkering and make it vague. And actually, if they do make it vague, that might work in our advantage because we can then make the exact point that's been made there. Oh, I like that. Oh, 
That's devious and clever. Oh, I like that. It, <coughs> it's also true, which makes it even more devious and clever. Oh, I like that. I may write that down and steal that. Uh, and I'm going to quote you on that. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, so, as we mentioned before, merging the three or linking the three, either way, well worth doing. So for those of you that haven't seen the power of three ones we've done before, I recommend doing so because we do talk about how you can link the three together. And we have made cases for and against. So we've explored it in the previous webinar. So revisit those. So if you've not seen them, do go and have a look because I, I am a proponent, proponent, proponent of how these three things all work together and how when synergized, be that together or separate, uh, how they can really help you and help your organization achieve what it wants to achieve. So, some things to consider. If we want to make the power of three endure, but also make us. So I would actually say this is the power of four. Your retention schedule, your ROPA, your information asset register, and you. The power of four, but 3.5, whatever you want to call it. I would say you are just as important as an asset, as your ROPA, as your information asset register, as your retention schedule. So I might tweak the power of three to be the power of three plus you or the power of four. Because we haven't really talked about you in the past. Whereas actually, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was in order to make this endure, you are a key element of that ingredient or key ingredient in that recipe. So what are you going to do about you? What are you going to do to get to where you want to go? What are you specifically going to do about getting there? So have you, for example, mapped out where the ocean? So have you, have you defined what good looks like for you? For your organization, what does good look like? Where do you want it to be? Where are you going? Because what we can often find, and I've been guilty of this, is we've gone into a problem where we've kind of just gone, we, we've firefighted. So we've picked some of these things that we've got here, but we haven't really been heading in a particular direction. We've just tapped away at them. We've been making progress. We've been doing some good stuff, but we're not necessarily going in a direction. So have you set that direction? So first things first, in order to deal with a big problem, define your outcome. What are you actually looking to get to? Where are you going? What does good look like? If you could wave a magic wand and your organization's information record management was pristinely beautiful, what does that look like? You may never get there. That's not the point. The point is you can head that way by defining where it is you want to go, then looking at what the key milestones, milestones are for getting there. So one that where someone talked earlier on about uh, looking at some of the areas around the big digital archive, this massive collection they've got, but small bit. Um, question, what do you call the combined power of three? I call it the power of three, PO3. You can come up with a funky name. Oh, perhaps we should do a competition. Oh, I might have a thought. Think about that. See if we can come up with a competition for a name. What would we call the combined power of three? Oh, 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 oh. That set me off. Right. Part that, Matt. We're going to do a little competition on that. That's a good idea. I like that. Um, what are the key milestones? What are the key tasks? What are the priority things? So what things are you going to focus on sooner rather than later? Oh, the Holy Trinity. No, stop it. Stop being distracted. Stop it. Uh, what are the key tasks? What are the priority tasks and my milestones? So what do you want to focus on surely sooner rather than later? And then pick them off one thing at a time, one problem at a time. So if you've got a bit of a an image problem, 
what little things can we do to change that image? Can we change the language we use? Can we get into team meetings? Can we bribe them with cake? When it is, well, I think we're at Essex, one of the things we did was bribe them with puppies. Obviously, we didn't give them puppies. We bought, you know, we, we raised money for guide dogs of the blind, but they brought in puppies. Puppies, great web day. Three star like the pop group, and we're the lead singer. Oh, de oh, oh. Do you know what? I, I'm going to do this as a competition. So remember these, those of you putting in suggestions, I'm going to do a competition on this because this is just brilliant. Um, need to agree a prize. Hmm. Uh, then focus on one task at a time. One little thing at a time, one little success at a time. Little and often, and you can get to where you need to go very much so. Come on. There we go. So on your to-do list, Things for you to take away, but I would encourage you to do. Don't have to, if you don't want to. You can totally ignore everything I've said and go off and have a cup of tea. Trust your George, you're grown adults, do as you like. But the first thing is how can you, if Roper is being watered down, I would encourage you to find ways of embedding it into your information asset management program. That way, then, doesn't matter what happens with Roper you are doing it. It's part of your program. Staff are already well aware of it. You can simply maintain it. And your energy, your strategy, your any other E word you want to use, uh, will be enough to drive it forward. So if you're currently running them separately, I would say you're probably a little bit more of a risk than if they were combined. Not a major difference, but definitely combined. Have a look at the skills matrix. Sorry, bit of a sales plug here. So the, the society has launched the skills, professional skills matrix, which has broken down all the different elements of information governance, records management. It's going to expand into data management, AI management, all that sort of good stuff, and broken it down into individual skills. So if there are some skills that you think, do you know what? I've got no idea how you do that. So how do you win friends and influence people? How do you speak to senior management? How do you present to a room? How do you, all these good things. From basic IRM skills, right the way through to soft skills. Uh, so if you then want to see, are there any, you then want actually want, well, can I go on a course on that? You can ask your employer first, because many employers put on their own soft skill courses. So could you go on some of those? But you could also then reach out to the society and say, I want, more soft skills training. What are you doing as a society to help me with those? And we can then see what people want. We are gonna start commissioning them. That's part of the long-term strategy. But what do you want? Let us know. But it starts with you. What do you want? Where are you going? What skills do you need? Let us know. And fundamentally ask yourself, what is the thing that could be the difference that makes the difference? Is that you? Is that a bit of technology? Is it a, a board, a supportive board member? What is that thing you are missing to help you get to where you want to go? And as people have mentioned all throughout here, they've had that thing or they've then got that thing because they tried something different. They reworked their approach. They spoke to someone different. They did something that made the difference. So what is that thing? And fundamentally, for those of you, you've been on my courses before, you know how this works. I'm going to be a bit geeky about it. Uh, do I don't want to hear. So while most of today it's been about you know, suggestion, putting ideas out there, letting you know what you think, the only hard and fast thing I would insist on is I agree with Yoda on this. Do or do not. Well, there is no try. So if you're going to do something, if you're going to trial something, do it. Put all of your weight into it. Put all of that effort, that energy, that passion that we riled up the, earlier on. Get all of that and put it into what you're doing. Otherwise, you're not doing it. You're merely trying it. And you're setting yourself up for a failure. So even if it doesn't quite work, doesn't matter. We can learn from that. There's positives and valuable things to be brought, even from failure. I think it was also Yoda that said that failure is the greatest teacher. So do or do not. There is no try. 
And that's everything I had for you. So there's some motivational stuff in there. There's some not quite pessimistic stuff, but certainly some things we do have challenges. This isn't a love and light. This is very much a there will be challenges. There will be things to consider. There will be things that will get in your way. There will be days when you just want to just bury your head in a pillow and stay in bed. And those days are perfectly acceptable. But they are the minority days. The majority of days we can do something about and we will do something about. So hopefully there's something motivational in there for you. There's some ideas to get some things stirring. Um, or if not, it's been absolutely fun talking about why we do what we do for 55 minutes. So either way, winner, winner, I take that as. Are there any questions, comments, anything else that people want to add? I've taken away two points around uh, doing a little competition to name the power of three. Um, and what was the other point? Well, maybe I've only taken away one point then. Hmm. Um, thank you very much. Good. I'm glad it motivated. That's what we like. Uh, I did, oh, I didn't check the press questions tab. After everything that um, Elizabeth said, and I did check it. And there's nothing in the questions tab as far as I can see, Scott. <laughs> I would have reminded oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel less guilty now. <laughs> so if no one has um, any other questions, um, it just falls to me to say um, a huge thank you to Scott for sharing his time and expertise with us it has been um, a brilliant session and a very new take on um, how we manage three of the core documents um, in, in records management um, we as a group we rely very heavily on the um, generosity of our speakers sharing their time and expertise so um, we very much appreciate when Scott comes to um, share his time with us um, I'm not going to wish everyone a happy you know what because I think probably the 16th of November <laughs> is a little early personally um, uh, but I hope that everybody has um, a brilliant afternoon and please um, keep your eyes open for the consultation about the 2024 programme it's a little late this year um, but we would look to uh, plan our first event um, for March 2024 so we have a little bit of time um, but please if you can uh, respond to the consultation the more uh, responses that I have the uh, the better take that I can make the programme. Um, so thank you once again, um, Scott, and I hope everybody has an amazing afternoon. Um, and we will now bring the, um, uh, the event to a close. <laughs>